Welcome to A Professor's Life, your fortnightly webcast for all things academia. I'm Chris. With me tonight, Stephen. Stephen's here. And Robert. <laughs> I think I'm here. <laughs> all right. Well, here we are. We are recording in the middle of May, which means final exams for most of us are over. The graduation is done, or at least it's happening very soon. And now we are in the era of the summertime, which might very well be the most misunderstood part of our job when it comes to the, the general public. I don't know. Would you guys agree? Maybe? Very much so. June, July, and August. June, yeah. July, and August, which is why we, we're professors, right? Because we have this three months off where we do nothing but, you know, play guitar talks. and <laughs> garden and live the leisurely life of an academic. So let's talk well, a little no, bit. There are those academics. I would call them very poorly paid. <laughs> sure. Well, I am too, but I still. Well, I didn't say that on. others aren't <laughs> also poorly paid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the June, July, and August ones definitely are. For sure. So I, thought, I, I thought we'd use the show to dispel that myth a little bit and talk a little bit about the summer. Maybe just academics can commiserate with each other about the misunderstanding. So, uh, Stephen, let's start with you. Um, what are you going to do this summer, work-wise? Uh, book report. Uh, no. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this this is, in theory, the best time to get involved, uh, get research going forward. You have that free time. You're not grading. You're not prepping right now for any other classes. Um, you're really in a good spot to uh, sort of enjoy yourself, right? You, you get your head down and do research. Um, so from that perspective, I'm really spending this time moving forward about four or five different projects. I'm trying to get things under review in the next month. Um, you know, again, all those things that you can do when you don't have to think about prepping something or dealing with the students at the time. Um, so, you know, research, exactly. right. Yeah. You know, the yeah. fun stuff. The fun stuff. Exactly. How about you, Robert? I know you have this move going on, but yeah. Um, so I'm let's... sort of in transition. Uh, yeah. So right now I'm doing, Tip, my, my typical summer stuff lately has mainly been administrative crap. So everything that doesn't get done during the school year, because uh, you're dealing with students or teaching classes and those kinds of things, all gets done in the summer. Um, research projects, setting up uh, grants, for pe grants for people, planning conferences, um, hiring, uh, dealing with uh, course scheduling, uh, just all the various mis miscellaneous crap. Um, this year I've got that, and then, you know, I moved to the new position, which starts July 1st. And then uh, I've got a prep because I've got, you know, new students in a new place, even though it's the courses I've taught. Uh, coming up on 50 times on the one of them. Um, got to redo those so they aren't stale for my students, uh, and then start my outreach gig. So this summer I'm going to be doing outreach, going and meeting with faculty, setting up new programs, getting out in the community hopefully have some time to get back into research, uh, which I'm looking forward to with the new gig because it's much more amenable to that because um, I've been doing so much administrative stuff. I haven't gotten anything else done. So, but again, I mean, uh, unfortunately, I don't get to sit on my ass for three months. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we always have that mark. I don't know if, if you guys have the same spot, uh, you know, with, with uh, Chris, with your, your fields. Um, our main academic conference is in August. And so that actually generally marks the end of the summer for us. That's when you've actually, you know, everybody leads to that, you get research done. And the second that happens, you come back into town and you're prepping and prepping and prepping back to, uh, to research. So the earlier statement of June, July, August, that doesn't even work for my world. I mean, I have to work May, June, July. Uh, once we hit August, again, we're into the fall semester. Right. Yeah. But typically they call it June, July and August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have our – actually, just tomorrow I'm leaving for uh, my big conference. It's an every other year conference. Otherwise, the other conference I go to in my field's in January, like <laughs> the first weekend of January. It's really weird. But anyway um, – Well, our conferences are frequently during the periods that people think we have off. Right, exactly. So it's very helpful there, except that it almost is always the week before – the weekend before the first week of classes. So it's like, you know, hurry home get, and prep for – you know, I usually have to prep several weeks over uh, Christmas to, to get this done. But anyway, back to summer. Um, so I have the advantage, I guess, I guess the advantage of knocking the conference out early. 
and we have a May term, so uh, there's May term classes going on right now. So I, it's almost like I get May, June, July, August with not doing my normal teaching schedule. Now this summer we're moving into a brand new building, my department is, so that's going to be its own little project. But let's just take that out of the equation right now and talk about typical summer, right? And as Stephen pointed out, it's, it's research, all right? Um, it's research uh, for me. Uh, I'm basically going to start writing up any research that my students and I have done that's publishable. I'll start doing that. I'll start initiating new projects. I'll start looking at projects to see if they can actually be, uh, I can collaborate with students or not on those projects because you can't just collaborate with student, undergraduates with any old project. You have to sort of test drive it a little bit first. Um, there's my other collaborations that I have going on, trying to push those forwards. I didn't think I've fallen off the face of the earth over the academic year. I, I have the ability to get some research done over the academic year, which is good, um, but nowhere near like the summer. And then, of course, I have some of Robert's world as well with the administrative stuff as a department chair. And there's always stuff going on. There's always like, oh, quick, we need this little bit of information here. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> death by a thousand paper cuts. Yes. You know, there's mm-hmm. no one major thing in the summer. I, I like to tell people when they ask me, what are you doing with your time off this summer? I'm like, well, working like I normally do. The only difference between the academic year and the summer is I don't get paid in the summer. Right. Actually, sometimes I find the academic year less work. Uh, sometimes. Because it's regularized. I kind of know what I'm doing all the time. It's kind of more, there's more routine, mm-hmm. which for me, routine routinized behavior is much easier where some of you're just hit with a random crap you know that you have to do from scratch you can't just rely on well i'll just do what i did you know last year at this time or i'm just going to you know the next week in my course schedule and i know the material so if i didn't have a chance to prep as much as i would have liked at least i can give them what i gave them last time Mm -hmm. Uh, so at least you always have something in the can Uh, but in the summer you just get so blindsided uh, Stephen and I were dumb enough to set it up so that this weekend we're putting on a freaking conference. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, because uh, why not? I don't know why we're brain damaged. It's, why not? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, poor Stephen uh, didn't know any better, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel a little guilty. Yeah, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <clears throat> I'm getting a lot of people saying, "Hey, that looks like a really good conference," and I guess that's something. Yeah. Um, I'm not even doing anything other than maintenance or administration for the conference because I don't have the the brain power to actually do the conference. Anything else, you know, actually thought. Yeah. Um, but and you know, thankfully get, we hired very well. Yeah. And our uh, admin is amazing. Yeah. If you don't have a good admin, you are so screwed. Yeah. I'm doing these extracurricular kind of activities. Um. You're taking a step back to, to Chris's earlier point about, you know, where do you are in the, in the projects? Um, you know, obviously doing research is a year-round profession, right? There's, there's the normal cycles. And every field has its own different cycles. I mean, some are, you know, a three-month turnaround or a two-week turnaround or a nine-month turnaround from when you submit something to when you hear back. I mean, that's such a wide range from place to place. Um, and that's part of the reason why if you have a somewhat extended window from when you submit to when you hear back. And our field is about 60 days is about the norm from when you submit to when you hear back. Um, That's, you know, if you try to write it and try to spend the summer writing, that means you submit by the end of the summer and it's already in the fall semester when you hear back. Uh, If you get an R&R, great world, you again, you spend time, you cycle and cycle and cycle. So there isn't truly an off time. That's the same sort of deal is that you may want to plan, particularly with family, to do something in the summer and do all those kinds of things. Hey, I want to go and relax. Well, if you're on a 10-year clock, um, you've got three months to respond to that letter, you know, that revise and resubmit, and that may be your summer. You may have to spend a lot of that summer working on that paper, let alone trying to ramp up the new projects or all the things Chris said, you know, vet the new projects for the new kids to work with, you know, move forward other collaborations, all those things that you want to do. Plus you have to react to the stuff that's already happening. Um, you really may have no flexibility. I know there's a lot of things that you may, you know, you, you really want to do. Um, but as, as Robert's talking about, you, it's unplanned. I mean, you can't really plan your summer to say, this is the way I'm going to work. This is how I'm going to do it. This is what I'm going to get accomplished. I have a general goal of what I hope to get accomplished in the summer. Um, but again, I, I thought I was going to do more this week, but you know, my conference is coming up. So I've kind of had my head down trying to deal with that. Actually, it's been eating up a lot of my life for the last month, you know? Yeah, no, I hear you. I mean, same thing here. I, when I start a summer, the first thing I do, like final exams week, is I write down what is everything I want to accomplish this summer. It's usually a lengthy list, and it <laughs> never gets finished, right? 
And then this week I wanted to get some more um, research related things done. They get some code written, whatever the case might be. But I, you know, I got swamped with meetings. I had, you know, meetings that relate to the new building, meetings that relate to being chair, you know, programs. And then this summer I don't have this, but last summer I did. Um, I had a new prep. I was teaching a new course in the spring semester of 2015. Well, I can't prep that course in the fall semester of 2014 because I don't have time. So I spent the summer prepping a course for uh, the following spring, which basically meant preparing lecture notes and uh, solving homework problems that I was going to assign. I pretty much knocked out and planning what laboratory activities the students are going to do for this particular class, uh, you know, about 10 to 12 laboratory activities, maybe 13, depending on the year. Um, all those things on top of the research and uh, I, I tend to write my lecture notes out by hand. Mm. Uh, I think it just works well for my field. The problem is, is that if you have carpal tunnel syndrome, <laughs> it does not help because a semester for me is about 150 handwritten pages mm. of lecture notes that I'm preparing. I, I kind of over prepare my notes just in case I. What's a lecture have a note? Brain fart. Have a le That's the thing <laughs> you're supposed to prepare before you give a lecture. Yeah, I don't do lecture notes, oh, okay. but I'm also the guy that'll do it, you know. 700 slide slide deck for half an hour so or one that's yeah good or one slide yeah yeah i tend to do mine so i guess those are my version of lecture notes whatever it is the thing behind me is my prompt mm -hmm. um i tend to do mine that way um i can't i uh, again this is a difference in field a lot of the stuff i do sometimes if the information is more than a week old it's now irrelevant um, the students won't relate to, you know, it's it's old stuff. Like if I'm teaching a piece on strategy, old stuff may not have changed in the last 20 years. But if you don't put it in the current context, then they're just, their eyes glaze over and they don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, you may as well start talking about, you know, Khrushchev and him pounding a shoe on the table, which I think just other than the, even for you guys would just be a historical thing you read in a book. Um which occasionally I find myself doing, and they don't get my references at all. So, and I say, okay, all of you that were born after Star Wars came out, get out of the room. And there's some of them are going, I think that's when my dad got born. <laughs> like, oh, God. Um, so, yeah, so a, a lot of it I got to, I'm constantly prepping, uh, which really eats up time. Because you can tell, at least when I was a student, I'm sure when you guys were a student, and even now with our colleagues, the guys pulling out their 20 year old acetates doing the same crap that they've been doing for 20 years and everybody just goes yeah whatever mine, mine are only 10 but uh they get yeah, but i think <laughs> starting yellow fundamental <laughs> physics doesn't change that doesn't much. change a whole lot that's yeah. right uh but just to feed off something else that steve had mentioned about summertime is that on top of all the work that you want to get done and, and in a sense you have to get done over the summer you have the family that yeah. You know, they want to vacation or, or, or do this or that. Or, you know, you have the parents because typically we don't live near our parents. If we're academics, it's, it's pretty <laughs> rare that that lines up. And so, the, you know, the parents want to see you. See, is, you know, and they're like, oh, well, yeah. And they all think you have the time. <laughs> you're off, right? Well, my mom is a, is a public school teacher. So she gets she gets it a little bit um, in terms of uh, how I spend my summers. But, you know, you get a lot of that pressure, though, of, well, you're – just kind of you know farting around in the summer yeah that's exactly what i'm doing you know uh at least as a scientist i can sort of say i have to go into the lab that helps a little bit <laughs> but i also write a lot of code so there's you know there's days where i just work from home and so my, my wife gets it but you know other people are like oh well you're just working from working from home today with all the stuff behind you right <laughs> yeah yeah sitting no. at your computer playing a game i mean uh writing yeah. code right 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 or you know, writing that next paper or whatever it is like. <laughs> well, I want to add one other piece to that, Chris. And you, you mentioned this idea about, you know, you do this on paid. And that really does depend, right? There's, it depends on what field you're in. It depends on um, grant money. Uh, yes. That may be a big piece of this. So in grant money, you often try to buy a one-ninth of your, your salary in the summer or two-ninths if you're in a wonderful world. Uh, which can provide you flexibility because as, as as we've been talking about, you you don't take off that summer. You still work in that summer. So if they provide you additional salary, um, which again, take a step back, if you are new or entering this area, you may not be aware that we work on nine-month contracts for many situations. Um, 
and depending on uh, school to school, a nine-month contract actually may pay out in nine months. Other places pay a nine-month contract over 12 months, which gets confusing. Um, so then you get your extra money in the summer. Does. Yeah. When I was down in uh, down when I was down working in Florida, I was actually getting my nine month cal- salary in nine months. Oh, weird. Oh, so, but they did benefits for twelve. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it was still a it was nice to get it. Got it faster. My money faster, which I appreciate. Um, but that adds in additional headaches. It's not that when you have that grant money, you suddenly have oh look at all my free capabilities right. I have because grants are easy and there's no responsibilities. Um, there's a lot yep. with that. Um, and <laughs> then yep, you have the not the best. Yeah, and, and then the, the on top of that is the universities start to crack down on this because they have, for some reason, apparently administrators and universities have now apparently been removed enough from being an academic, per se, that they don't remember this summer. And so there are things that are being introduced. It happened at our university uh, about a year or two ago. They were telling people that if you were taking summer support, you're getting one-ninth, two-ninth summer support, you weren't allowed to leave the town during the summer because we have to make sure you're working, not just, you know, uh, taking your money and running. So they were trying to encourage people to sign something. If you were taking two month, a two ninth salary that you were not going to leave during two months of the summer that you were going to physically be in town, which I'm pretty sure is illegal, um, which doesn't stop a university from doing something illegal, but, um, <laughs> it's still one of those is that apparently even at the universities, they're not quite sure they understand how you do your job. Uh, which is something to be aware of. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. And, and you know, on top of that, uh, there's the expectations that you're going to be around anyway, even if you don't have a grant. Mm-hmm. So there's open houses. They want to have faculty, you know, to, to, to meet people. And uh, there's advising sessions. And there's even sometimes committee meetings. There was a committee that I was on one time that, you know, would meet once a year, but it was in June. <laughs> yeah. You know? Then and have their spend a summer day or come pretend you're a college student for a day thing. Mm-hmm. Right. And they expect you to just show the hell up. Yep. Right. It's like, uh, I'm not around. I'm gathering data. I'm doing my job. Visit other campuses on yeah. the bus tour. It also happens. Yeah. yeah. There's just some insane stuff where they just, and all of it, you're just expected to do. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, and if you don't have tenure, <laughs> Good luck. There is that, right? Because I mean, you will be punished. Yeah, if you're tenured full, you can. It's a little bit more. Uh, you can you can blow off a few more things to be quite honest. Department head can still punish you if they chose to. Absolutely. All the crappy classes or the crappy times. Sure. They, if know. only you knew the department head or were the department head. Well, <laughs> so or if you're a member of a small department. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, then you're you screwed too. It. Yeah, then you can't avoid it. So. Right. You know, so you're right. You can get punished by your head or whoever your superior might be, or you can't avoid it because of small uh, issues. Or you know, there's the kind of the pressure. Academics like what they do, and and, and more than some other careers, academics, I think, um, very much identify themselves with their career. It's a profession. Well, sure, yeah, you don't yeah, go into it profession. for the money. Right. You don't. You're not going into it for the money, certainly. And so it's sort of part of like this is you know, part of my identity and you almost feel as if you feel bad if you're not performing as well as you should or doing all the things that you feel like you should be doing, like these little extra things that pop up over the summer, even if you don't get paid for them. Uh, There's that pressure. Uh, And I think a lot of it we put on ourselves, but there's also... Oh, no, we do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got a... We've made... Stephen and I have made jokes about it that I've got a year's worth of uncompensated overloads that it's just like when's my sabbatical year um, right. that you just why because if i didn't do it they wouldn't have been taught right. you know do it for the students oh we, we have a it's uh, just sort of a thing and everybody does this stuff we all do all kinds of things if we only did what was in our contracts nothing would get done well i mean take it from reviewing unless you're in a certain field in which they pay the reviewers you're doing that which Service. is a major part of your job for free Oh yeah, absolutely. And providing part of our job is expected at most, sometimes yeah. even more. Yeah, I mean, sixty percent of my job now is service. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, how the hell do you define that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a creep that I think would be a, a good topic for another show. Yeah. <laughs> Institutional service and how it's crept up over the years. Yeah. Um, well, we love our committees because that's where ideas go to die. Oh. I'm- well, the best is is the uh, friend of mine at his university. They actually have a committee on committees. 
So it's a committee that's formed to dole out committee awesome. assignments. So it's it's very meta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely a, a topic for another show yeah. because it's uh, in some places, in some we gotta cases. we got to do a show just on it. faculty meetings. <laughs> yeah, we're all uh, in a position where we can do that without getting in trouble. So <laughs> Name no oh, names. I'll, I'll go all the way. <laughs> Steven sent me a joke, so I'm going to out him a little. Uh, at least he didn't say it in public. I have said it in public. That I hope when I die, it's during a faculty meeting, so the transition will be seamless. <laughs> so, you know, I'm singing the Minty Mint song in my head, wishing there was a place where I could sit in back with my iPad and play Angry Birds, you know, because it's 10 minutes worth of stuff and it takes four hours. We like to talk. And sure as hell, don't point that out to anyone. You want to see people get pissed. <laughs> Tell them about all the time they just wasted of your life. Or tell them that clearly you value your time at zero. Hmm. You know, I have to value my time. Apparently you don't. So, yeah, so I'll say it. <laughs> Fair enough. So what have we missed? We have conference travel in the summer. I'll yep. put my finger up here. All right. <laughs> we have course preparation. Mm -hmm. All right. Whether you have a new prep or you don't have a new prep. Mm -hmm. We have research which is sort of there's multiple fingers here for the research finger <laughs> get an entire That's probably side. the wrong finger yeah the entire <laughs> side here where we have you know collaborations new collaborations old collaborations students um, visions so, new projects so pa yeah right papers all those things uh we have the occasional committee meeting this is the finger for that one all right uh <laughs> we have uh uh, all the, the occasional activities for the college that mm -hmm. um, we may or may not be compensated for. Yeah. Uh, well, there's and, administrative work. There's the university yep. politics. There's donor cultivation. Yep. Yeah, which you've done a bit of now, so you know how much that sucks. Um, you know, I uh, spent a lot of time trying to hit up donors, corporate and uh, regional donors, because the states, I mean, the state school, the state does not supply the level of support that they used to the um, federal government got out 20 years ago yeah there's just so you're going to private you know and it's not just tuition dollars as much as students really hate the tuition dollars that is such a small amount of the funding if you look at overall funding now it's government grants it's it's hitting up wealthy individuals to give back alums mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know saying hey look what we did for you now you know give a little back help the next kid yeah, setting remember. up scholarships it's calling through the kids to find out who should get the scholarships. Oh, yeah, because there's interviews, right? There's uh, a lot of times all the students come on campus to interview, and that can happen during the summertime as well. It's, mm -hmm. So and then we're talking about what about grad students? We got thesis proposals, we got defenses, we got all that crap to deal with. You know, reading through their eight thousand page fluff, saying, "Okay, yeah, there's about four of this that's rescuable. Let's turn over." Uh, it's. I wish it was June, July, and August. As I said, I really do think sometimes the traditional academic year is less work. So, at least for me, it's a lot less work. Uh, mainly because I don't have to hide as much. <laughs> you know, I have to. My admin has to play a lot more gatekeeper during the summer, um, and there are times when I won't get in because if I'm in the office, I'm not getting any work done. Because there's some fire to put out. There's someone coming in with some inane question who needs help with something that they could have figured out themselves. You know, if you weren't there, they would have figured it out themselves and probably done a better job than the advice you give. Um, well, I mean, that's a general statement about the more administrative responsibilities you take on, the more the office becomes it's problematic. Trap. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the case for a lot of people is that the administrative job you have to separate and that's why you know again chris you're talking about doing coding at home um if you're taking an administrative role and you're gonna be department chair it makes a lot more sense to do your research at home and your uh administrative stuff at work just you know you, you keep those two lives separate yeah but if i were an experimental physicist uh that would be a tough <laughs> tough gig because you know there's no way i could set up a laboratory in my house true but uh, if you had a lab you don't have to be in your office per se you don't have to be where you're accessible if you're doing a lab and you're setting something on fire or you're blowing something up um generally people like to stay away or get really close and look at it but they're not necessarily going to ask you a whole lot of questions you'd be surprised <laughs> well they're going to expect you to approve budget reports fair enough yes lab. ah budget report eh let's see Actually, how if this burns you'd be surprised how many times people have knocked on the door of my lab uh morons to, to yeah um 
So it's best to be at home if you can in the summertime. It, it really is uh, to, to get things done for sure. Yeah. Though with so, kids, for me, it's I can't be at home. So. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah no. I didn't quite. Uh, I now feel your pain. <laughs> when you just had your boy, he, Stephen has two children. When you just had the older one and I didn't have one. You, you sympathize, but you couldn't really empathize uh, with it. And it's just like, well, it sounds like it sucks, but I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Now I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because unless you hate your children, you know, it's, you know, it's like, hey, daddy, pick me up. It's just like, well, and I'd rather be doing that than anything I could possibly do as part of my job. You know, because I like my child. Um, and, and so I, I totally get your world much more now, man. So it's it's odd. You had kids into this mix and the complexity goes up dramatically yeah i can only imagine don't have kids myself but i could only imagine um and i can only imagine you know if uh i was female the dynamic that that it's a whole different different ball game whole different ball game Mm -hmm. Uh, so i easy yeah 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 Yeah, we really do conversation for a future day yeah. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I know we're preaching to the choir here with this topic of the show because most of the people that listen to our show are probably academics, but hopefully uh, our friends listening to the show can, uh, the next time one of their non-academic friends say, so wh- how are you screwing around this summer? They can show them the link to our show and say, check this out. It's not just me complaining. Look at these three guys <laughs> also complaining about their summer and their summer schedules. Well, we may have just talked a whole bunch of PH potential phd students out of it because they were thinking Ooh, grad school better oh. get a real job i mean i don't know how many how many grad students you talked to when i when i was uh, you know earlier on in my career i had all the students who said i'm going to get my phd because i want the job flexibility and i laughed at them um oh it's great you only work nine months and you don't really have to work it's like seriously how do you not know that when you're already in the phd program haven't you, you looked around the hallway attention? yeah are you, are you not paying attention I, no they're from undergraduate yeah. world yeah even if they're not undergraduates yeah. anymore. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, just think our academy has entire sessions on how the profession works meant for PhD students. Yeah. So it's just like, ooh, probably would have been good if you knew this before you got into this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's, well, some of them are so young. No, it varies. I mean, from again, it's a field by field issue here, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and some of it you come directly out of undergrad because you have no other choice. Um, some people go into this like in our and the business world, particularly uh, business schools. You don't enter prior to twenty five, twenty eight. Um, I mean, we have students who are in their forties and they're getting their PhD. It's just a lot, lot more of the norm in that world. Yeah, but even then, they haven't. They've spent so much time in the business world yeah. that they're totally convinced it's slack time. It's summer's <laughs> off. No. I remember one of our, uh, see, after I took comps, I was fried. It was probably a good month there. I was not productive. And there's a faculty member who I very much respect who was a little pissed off that our students wanted two weeks. You know, <laughs> this is not June, July, and August, people. And just taking two weeks off would destroy your academic career. And it's not, it's not an unreasonable position. You know, because you take time off, you're behind. So comps is the only time you're really up to speed. And from there's there, a, it's all downhill unless you bust your butt. There's another show topic, work expectations and work-life balance. Mm, yeah. There's a balance? Yeah. Yes, there <laughs> yeah. is. There is yeah. a balance. There's always a balance. It's not equally balanced, but there's a balance. Right. right. If right. a witch yeah. weighs the same as a duck, on. then <laughs> – or if a woman weighs – I'm sorry. Witch. So, yeah, it used um, to be if I'm awake, I'm working. <laughs> All right, so we're hitting about our our half hour limit. Last time we went yep, over. Yep. This time, I think we're going to shoot for the right time limit. So, Good job, uh, Chris. we have yes, we have a Twitter feed now uh, at a professor's life. So please um, follow us on Twitter. Uh, please like the video, subscribe. We will eventually be on iTunes, but until then, please throw stuff up as reviews and uh, comments on YouTube. And once we have the iTunes up, please comment. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email us. Uh, uh-oh, I can't remember the email address off the top of my head. A professor's life at gmail.com, I do believe. If it isn't, it will be soon. Tweet us. Just <laughs> tweet if it's us. not Jester Cat, let's, let's go with that. Yeah, yeah, it's not that. Or just leave that message on that YouTube video you're watching right now. <laughs> All right. I should have done my homework before the video show. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> it's the summer. You're not doing any work. That's right. That's right. And we don't do homework. We just give the assignments. 
So with that, what we'll say, uh, fellow academics, is just enjoy the summer, uh, laying around, just like we know you'll be doing. Yeah. <laughs> Until next time. Until next time. Good night.